Father Arupe kind of coins that phrase, meant for others, for others, to describe the vision of Jesuit education as something more than just becoming uh, top uh, intellectual graduates and successful uh, individuals for their own particular good, uh, but looking beyond themselves. I think trying to describe the Jesuits to somebody who doesn't know us is probably like trying to describe a cactus to an Eskimo. It's, <laughs> it's like nothing they've ever seen before. If you ask me what I really love and is really fundamental in terms of my life and who I am, even though I might not exhibit it too much, it's probably music. What I really like doing is uh, going to live theater. I've always had a love of, of cooking, especially Italian food. It's not like our lives are constant study. People, people think, gosh, you know, I wish I could go to the Jesuit community to go to dinner so I could hear what philosophical and theological conversations they're having. For over 25 years, I've been saying a Spanish mass, usually twice every Sunday, and have been involved in community development and uh, leadership development among the immigrant community. Um, and some of it is uh, moral support, some of it is pastoral leadership, um, but that involvement with the, the immigrant, uh, Spanish-speaking immigrant community uh, is, uh, is, is probably my the closest thing to a hobby. I'm from New Orleans and I really like to eat. This year uh, I feel very happy because I've seen all nine films nominated for Best Picture. I've always had a bike. And... When I live in Chicago, I ride along Lake Michigan. They have a nice bike trails there. I love to read, as most Jesuits do, and I love to read particularly what's called serious travel writing. Not guidebooks, but books exploring other countries and other cultures. One of the joys about the Jesuits are, is that uh, I don't know that it's easy to stereotype us. There's a real variety of people, you know, which is cool and makes it interesting, you know? I don't know that we would ever be naturally friends if we weren't Jesuits because I don't know what would draw us together, you know? But the fact, you know, that those differences are there, most people, not just the Jesuits here, but Jesuits in general, find enriching. Well, I describe us as a Catholic religious order, and that means we are priests and brothers who like the Dominicans, Franciscans, are priests and brothers who take the three vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, and we live together in community. Because sometimes people will say, well, what's the difference between a Jesuit and a Catholic? You know? Uh, and I always think, well, <laughs> and these are Catholics asking these questions, you know? And I say, well, you know, Jesuits are Catholic. And there's always that spirit of Ignatius that I think is uh, permeates everything that um, you know Ignatius told his men you know go forth and set the world on fire. Here was a guy who was uh, a man of the world to begin with, uh, a military man, and uh, had a conversion experience and was as passionate after conversion as before so he, he was a very passionate person all the way through. I think that that's still part of who we are and what we do you know that, that there's a there's a passion for uh, being the best teacher you can be, or making a difference in the lives of students or your parishioners or people. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth uh, spoke to the Jesuits at our last big meeting, our congregation, and, and he said the Jesuits' mission is to be on the frontiers of the church where others uh, are not present. The Jesuits started out um, being a little bit different, they were, they were blazing uh, uh, a new path. For me, the Jesuits are an order that really is sort of out there on the cutting edge because St. Ignatius founded us not to really be cooped up in monasteries. In the late Renaissance, they were blazing a new path because people started to focus on the fact that we live in this world and we embrace stuff in this world and we can find God in this world. The mission of the Jesuits is to bring the church to the world and the world to the church. 
to uh, find God in all things, to insert ourselves into the world, to make a difference. The Jesuits are certainly committed to uh, furthering the gospel message, but we all do that in, in different ways. So some are teachers, and some are pastors, and some are lawyers and doctors. The individual Jesuits have so many different faces that it's even hard to say what a Jesuit is in that sense. But they're all joined together by that sense that God can be found in the workplace and in the busy, uh, in our busy lives and in the cities and in the countries, in the middle of the ocean, anywhere, you know. We don't have to escape to find God. Uh, the Jesuits seem to be, uh, you are called to uh, uh, d uh, explore your, your, your talents, uh, develop them, and uh, then, then go where sent. And uh, the only, the only uh, agenda item was to uh, help souls, and I like that. They're Jesuits in sociology, astronomy, and teaching, and mission work. And so although our primary uh, mission is education, colleges, universities, Really, we're out there as scholars, theologians, we have doc judgments who are doctors, lawyers, astronomers. So our, our mission is to really be out in the world. I was always drawn to community, and I knew that the Jesuits were, uh, community what, what was their way of life, and, and that attracted me. Our community is a very live and let live community. It's an older community in terms of our ages. Uh, Father Bailon is sort of the baby being in his 40s. But we're, we're close and we're independent. We're not the kind of community which meets and kind of bears our souls the way younger Jesuits did when I was in theology. But we care deeply about each other. We're there to support each other. We can be honest with each other and talk about things in our community meetings. But we're also very different and very independent men. Well, even though we live in community, we're fiercely independent men. We, every, every evening we uh, have our evening meal together and uh, usually that's the time that, that we have uh, time together. Uh, and then the rest of the time, uh, each one of us is very involved in our own ministries and, and, and uh, professions. It's also, and I hope the community will forgive me this one, but uh, we don't have any crazies in our community. Um, when you live in, in, with a group of, of guys, um, uh, it's important that there's a, a good chemistry about uh, how we pray together, how we live together, and, and we really have that here. It's really nice to, to know that if I've had a bad day at the office, I can go home and there's, my community is there. And, it's a good supportive group of people. That, that's the test of community, that you're, that you're more than you could be by yourself. And I felt that I've always had that experience, that there's, there's, there's a more me that comes out because of, of being in community. You know, it's not like we have to be there, but people actually enjoy spending time with each other, you know. So, unlike some other places, you know, there is an easy, relaxed feeling and we live in like normal houses so that you don't have this sense if you're living in a hospital or an institution, you know, it's not one big uh, antiseptic uh, house that looks like it came out of Stalingrad or something. When I came to Spring Hill, it was really a kind of a unique community because we're not, we were not living in an institution. They, we used to live here in this building around the rotunda. So this room right here, uh, uh, my, in front of me is the office of our divisional secretary. I used to live in that room, and this was the room of another Jesuit, and this area here was the Jesuit residence. And then we moved out of here in 1981. It was restored for office space. We have that Jesuit compound there, but we're living in real houses, not just, you know, a long line of rooms along a corridor in a big official residence. So it's homey and it's home. And I still have my apartment in the residence hall, so I really, I really cherish living with students as a very important part of my mission here. Now, there are only two of us in the residence halls now, Father Kitten and myself. And when I came here 25 years ago, I specified 
I will come here if I can live as I have been doing with the students. And I've been living with students, but primarily freshmen, for almost 35 years. Which leads someone to say, well, well, either you're a masochist or a saint. And I say, well, someone said to me when I said that line, which is a good laugh line to use, uh, masochist now, saint later. <laughs> so, uh, but it's great, and I love it. My role is primarily with campus ministry, and uh, I'm listed as spirituality for campus ministry. Uh, so that means that I, I work with uh, uh, the faculty with our eight weeks directed prayer retreat experience. Uh, I'm available for, for spiritual direction. Uh, I help with, uh, with uh, retreats, also with uh, open for, for, for confessions. A uh, number of students prefer to come into confession in, in, the, in my office rather than uh, in, in the regular confessional. So we never know what's going to happen every day, but, there's, uh, but always something exciting and new happens every day. Some of us, uh... I think engage students on a number of different levels, both uh, in the classroom, outside the classroom, uh, perhaps in more uh, social uh, arenas, others in more spiritual arenas. And the most thing I, I enjoy the most are my associations with three student groups. I have Alpha Sigma Nu, the Jesuit Honor Society. I have the Knights of Columbus. And most special, I have Lambda Chi Alpha. Uh, the fraternity of men that I really guide as their advisor. I'm also an initiated member, and this fraternity experience has had a major impact on my life and changed my life for the better. And I value that and I cherish that very, very much. It's not a big turnout to watch football on a Sunday, although clearly they're, the house is mostly Saints fans, and uh, so that's always nice. You can, if the Saints are on TV, generally people will gather. There, there are just not a whole lot of sports fans in the community. Uh, the day I would get Father Borbish to watch a football game, uh, what might be the uh, end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all Spring Hill College fans. There we go. We're, we're go Badgers. <laughs>